Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Today, what am I doing? I am reviewing Shenmue for the PlayStation 4. So what is Shenmue? Well, the game, it's kind of like a, an RPG, detective, kung fu, kind of mini open world game set in Japan. That's like the least coherent genre description I've ever done. So it, it's a game that originally came out on the Dreamcast in 1999. It was released by Sega, and made by Yu Suzuki, who's a famous um, developer in Japan. It's a game that's kind of become cult, a cult status kind of classic. So what is the game about? The game focuses on Ryo Hazuki, who's a Japanese boy who lives with his parents. Um, his father runs a dojo, so he's into kind of karate, kung fu, martial arts. The game begins with a set piece where Ryo is coming home and some commotion is happening at his house. And there's, a, there's some guy there who's having a confrontation with his father and they're fighting. This is a guy called Lan Di, who's um, Chinese, looks very menacing. Basically, these two seem to have some historical beef, which isn't made clear at the start. So Rio is kind of like confused. Rio's father ends up getting killed and Landy and his sort of crew roll out in their black vehicles. And Rio is there with his mother and the, the guy who lives with them, who's like the dojo assistant. The game focuses around Rio's journey of trying to come to terms with his father's death, trying to be the dutiful son and not upset his mother and trying to figure out who were the guys in the black vehicle? Who was the guy who killed his father? How did he know his father? Why did he kill him? What is the secret past of his father? Because he doesn't really know anything about that kind of part of his life. So it's like a detective game with other elements in it. So there's a lot of investigative conversational elements. It's set in a Japanese town. It's very authentic. If you've ever been to Japan, it feels like Japan, like in all aspects. You have to kind of go and speak to people, find information. It's very old school in that. It's like a sort of almost like a film noir style without it being like that graphically. So you have this detective element, conversational element. You have this combat side where you're a martial artist so you can train and learn moves and become better at the combat. There are a lot of mini games. There's an arcade in the kind of main street in the town near his home. It has get like old racing games. It has this Space Harrier, um, darts, and an amazing quick time event game, which is just fantastic. And the, the town is full of different wonderful characters. And that's really what the game is about. It's about the character of the people and the locations and all the little minutiae of it. So in terms of gameplay, what is the style of the game? It's hard to put it into a genre because it kind of flits in and out of a lot. It's like a, an open world RPG, but on a smaller scale. But the smaller scale means there's a lot more detail within the small environment. So like I say, there's a lot of conversation, detective work, trying to piece the puzzle together to develop the story, develop relationships with characters like his love interest, Nozomi, and his family and people he knows in the town, trying to get information from them. It's quite... Um, it's quite a slow paced game. The story unfolds very sort of methodically. Um, there are enemies in the game like other ga there's gang members and thugs and people who want to start fights with you. So you do have these kind of sometimes you have real fights, sometimes you have quick time fights. So there's there's occasional combat, but it's very sparse. It's not very um, regular. So it's not a combat game, but it has some elements in there. I mean, I'd say the overall feel of the game, it's a very slow paced Un unfolding story it's very very Japanese anyone who's watched Japanese cinema or played like, sort of classic Japanese games it's not rushed they know it's not a high octane it's all very slow deliberate piece by piece by piece you will uncover the puzzle you will find out the information and you will kind of have an enriched vision of what the game developer wanted you to see so you will slowly piece the big story together but it is very slow and methodical and, it, and it, it might be difficult for some gamers, especially in the modern times where we're a very quick fix society. If you don't like games where you have to wait for things, this could be tricky to enjoy. But it, it makes you feel a sense of being a young boy who's a bit confused and he doesn't really know what's going on. So you're trying to find things out and you're, you're you know, a rookie, you're very kind of like um, green in that respect. You don't really have the life experience. The game 
in my opinion, one of the strongest parts of the game is the, very, the unique elements. Especially when it came out, this game set a precedent for a lot of other games that have come before, come since and, um, and are out now. It has a day-night cycle, which I don't believe was very frequent in games 20 years ago. That's handled very nicely, like Ryo has to go home by a certain time or his mother will worry. That's a nice touch, so it makes you anchored to your family. There's like a mini mart in there, a little supermarket. You can go in and buy batteries and cassette tapes and things, and you can use the batteries and flashlights and tape recorders to listen to music. That's you know, light bulbs, very kind of like regular day-to-day -day stuff. There's an arcade, which like I said before, has amazing kind of games. You can lose hours in there. And it really deals, it's one of the first games I played back in the day that dealt with time, time as an actual relevance, because there is a clock in the top of the, the screen and you have to keep an eye on the time because sometimes you have a story element, you meet someone, you have a chat and they go, okay, meet me tomorrow at 2 p.m. at this building. And then you literally have to be there at two, otherwise you'll miss the story. So it's kind of, and you have, it keeps you kind of locked into the cycle of day in, day out life in just general Japanese culture. Even to the, like one of the best points of the game is when you work at the harbor in the kind of a middle to second part of the game because you need to get some money to do something and it's you can't get it any other way so you have to get a job and that's great because you have to get up early you have to get a bus to work you have to work then you have to get the bus home you know so it becomes like a sort of day-to-day -day ritual and it really grounds your character it's like it kind of felt like when I had my first job as a kid you turn up you do some stuff you get some money it's like oh this is cool I, I'll come tomorrow it's, it kind of brings that sense of like being a youngster and not really knowing how the world works. So graphically, obviously this game's 20 years old. It's not a complete remaster. It's more, they've added a little sort of bit of polish to it, but it, it essentially looks like the way it did back then. The cutscenes are all in four by three, so they're kind of the old square TV style. But the actual gameplay is done 16 by nine widescreen, so you can play this on your widescreen TVs and you won't even know it's like a 4x3 game. They've kind of changed the dimensions, but the cutscenes will all be 4x3. Not a big problem though. The character animations are, you know, they're okay. They're a little bit kind of clunky because there's 20 years ago and things have developed obviously huge amounts. They do the job. The running, you know, it's not some super smooth. It's a bit like dated, but it's not bad. It just, you have to realize it's 20 years old. The graphics on the environments are really nice. Like you really feel like you're in Japan. Like if you've ever traveled Japan, you've been to kind of small town Japan and little kind of villages and things. It really feels like that. And then if you've been to Tokyo, you can see the sense of the small busy streets with lots of vendors and stuff. It's, it's very um, environmentally, it's got really nice detail. It's, some of the textures maybe aren't as, as good as modern games, but for, for 20 years ago, this game looks amazing. It's like, at the time, this just blew my mind when I saw it. I thought, what the hell? Like, how is this a game? And I think, yeah, the dynamic weather and time are definitely elements that impacted the game back then, and now it's, it's commonplace in games. But in this game, like, it can snow some days, it can rain, it can be nice. And the time of day, you know, the weather changes, you get sunset, you get nighttime. So it feels like a real cycle, and it was one of the very early games to do that. The lighting in that regard is done well, considering the age. Um, obviously, there's no camera mode because this game is way before all that kind of thing took off. Can you do stills? Mm, kind of ish. Like maybe you can do them in the cutscenes, but then they're 4 by 3 But it's it's really not the sort of game you're gonna do many screenshots, to be perfectly honest. So in regard to the music. The music is very sort of classic Japanese in the background. The theme, the main theme is a really beautiful piece of music. It just spends, sends them um, like tingles up my spine just hearing it. I just remember playing this game and thinking at the time, 20 years ago, this is amazing. When I first got this game, uh, it was, I remember it, it was Christmas day. Someone got it for me for a gift and I'd been out Christmas Eve, had a few too many lemonades, if you know what I mean. and. Um, I was in a terrible state and I couldn't go to the family meal because I was just sick as a dog. So I had to spend the whole of Christmas day on my own in bed, but I had Shenmue. So it was actually one of the best Christmas days I've had. It was such, like to be there just playing this game and like living the experience. I really loved it. And it's a great memory of like the first time I experienced it. And the music really brought me back to it. Um, yeah, so the, generally the music's good. There's kind of like cheesy, 90s video game music in there as well, but it's not like terrible The sound effects are kind of um, okay. 
they sound some sound a little bit dated but they, they do the job it's a little bit kind of deliberate it's not as subtle and smooth as you get in some games like Red Dead now but at the time they were really top draw now they're okay so that brings me on to the voice acting is the voice acting any good well anyone who's played Shenmue will tell you about the voice acting the the English dubbed version is possibly some of the most hilarious things I've ever heard in my life like there are just kids that come out with random lines, random strangers, Chinese people, like, listen to some of this stuff. Hey mister, you wanna wrestle? Alright man, I'll try. Don't you know that blackmail is way uncool? Oh no. Not all Chinese people are bad. Like, it's just quirky, cheese, cringy nonsense. It's like a sort of um, kung fu movie from the 70s that's been dubbed really badly. But there is also a kind of charm to it. This version has the Japanese audio also, which wasn't in the original. And the Japanese voice acting is really good. If you want to play it in an authentic Japanese style, play it with that. Because I started with English as out of the nostalgia. And then after a while I got annoyed because the, the quality of the audio recordings of the voices are a bit crackly. They're not very pro level. And um, so I put it onto the Japanese voices and it was really nice, really great smooth recordings, good quality acting. So I was using the Japanese, but then I kind of missed the English voices because they're just quintessentially part of the experience for me because I recall the game in an English dialogue. So I, I, I switched it back and I stuck with all the kind of the cheese fest. Hey mister, you wanna wrestle? Some other time, okay? The, the ambience of the towns is nice. It kind of sounds authentic. It's not like massively noticeable but it's done well so what are the pros and cons so the good points is it's a really nice story it's a very rich and detailed game world it makes you think it makes you kind of think in an analog way it's very 90s very kind of like pre-android world pre-internet it's for a lot of manual labor a lot of actually like writing a telephone number down on a piece of paper because you've got to dial the number on the old classic phones that's a nice touch it's 90s nostalgia it's good story it's rpg it's kind of detective kung fu cheesy kind of stuff cheesy japanese arcades quirky toys you can buy it's all the kind of japanese rpg vibes it's a good experience you know it's, a, it's an enjoyable experience it's one you should do so it's got a lot of good points bad points are it is a little bit slow and there are times where you are waiting around like once you've done all the arcades and you've bought all the things in the shops and you've spoken to everybody and you've done all the training and stuff like that and then you've got to wait for 50 real life minutes to, to speak to someone the next day that gets tedious maybe uh you know you end up just going and make yourself a cup of coffee and having like a danish while you just leave the console on so like it would be nice if you could skip time in this i think but then again it's an integrated part of the experience they want you to explore the game world when you've got that time to kill so it's not really a bad point the voice acting is a bad point and a good point because it's terrible quality and really cheesy but it's got a some sort of magical charm to it that it's so bad it becomes good it's quite slow and if you don't like slow games you're going to struggle but there's too many, there's so many good points that outweigh the bad. So what do I think? Do I think you should buy this game? I think if you enjoy cerebral, slow paced, unfolding stories that are very rich and detailed and have lots of elements that slowly, slowly build up a big picture of a really nice story in a very rich, vibrant world that's very unique from it for its time and it's influenced the gaming industry for many, many years since then, then you should buy this game. If you like non-stop action, you like quick fix gaming, you like sort of really sort of hyper intensive games that are very full on, this game is really not for you. It really just depends what you're like. If you like kind of slow paced, very sort of like twee stories about kind of a young boy trying to figure something out, detective work, mini games, quirkiness, quirky Japanese culture, you'll love this. You just have to figure out, is that does that sound like your kind of thing? So the verdict, well, what would I give it? Like if, if I'd have reviewed this when it came out in 1999, I would have given this game probably a 9.5 out of 10 because it was close to perfect back then because back then it just blew everyone away. It was like, what is this? This is absolutely sensational. 20 years have passed, so I have to factor in the way the industry is now. 
the way the games industry has changed and look at it from from that perspective so i'd say despite some of the negatives and some of the slowness of it and some of the kind of janky controls and voice acting it's still got so many good elements and it's a real pleasure to play and it's a game you should play as a game historian because it's a real important piece of work that changed the industry so I will give this 8 out of 10. Obviously, yeah, I would give it 9.5 if I reviewed it in 99, but I'm reviewing it as a game released today. So 8 out of 10, it's still a very good game. It still looks good, sounds good, worth playing, lots to do. It's an experience everyone who likes sort of rich stories should enjoy and should try. So that was Shenmue. I'll be reviewing Shenmue 2 shortly. I just need to sort of get into it and play it. Um, so in brief, yeah, it's a good game, still a good game after 20 years. Check it out if it sounds like your cup of tea. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, click on the bell, tweet me, whatever you want to do. I'll do my best to respond to everybody. Have a great day. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.